From the archives of the greatest dramas in radio history, we proudly present Hollywood. The Radio Theater, starring Charles Coburn, Tom Drake, Beverly Tyler, Jim Cronin, and Dean Stockwell in The Green Years. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, another MGM picture. An outstanding favorite is being presented on the stage. A thrilling drama that will live forever in our hearts. It's A.J. Cronin's masterpiece, The Green Year. And we are fortunate indeed in bringing you the original motion picture cast. Charles Coburn, Tom Drake, Beverly Tyler, Ewan Cronin, and Dean Stockwell. It's curtain time, and here's the play millions of you hope to see. The Green Year. Starring Charles Coburn as Grandfather Gow, Tom Drake as Roby, Beverly Tyler as Allison, Ewan Cronin as Mr. Lucky, with Dean Stockwell as the boy Roby. In the year 1900, Robert Shannon, orphan, aged nine years, journeyed from Ireland to the town of Logansett in Scotland, there to make his new home with Mr. and Mrs. Lucky the parents of his dead mother. You're late, Mama. Supper's waiting. I'm sorry, James, but my train was delayed. I suppose you spent good money on the card? No, we don't. Well, look at Robbie. This is your grandfather. Robert, no one regrets more than I that we meet under these circumstances. You call me Papa rather than Grandpa. We have one Grandpa in the house already. He's my father, Robbie. Grandpa Gow. Well, this is Kate, dear, and your aunt. Don't look so sorry for you. This is his dear. And this is your Uncle Murdoch? I hope you like it here, Robbie. Thank you. Our other son, Adam, lives in London. A very successful insurance broker, Robert. Look, it's hard for you boys coming to know us all at once. You'll feel better after supper. Sit down. Oh, Heavenly Father, you've blessed me with this new responsibility, my grandson, Robert. You know, Lord, how his mother deceived me and married a wild, irresponsible Irishman. Not even at the face of his household. Help me to carry this extra burden and deliver him from deceit, wild ways, and extravagance. Amen. Amen. Pass your plate. <clears throat> Boy has no belongings, Mama? Nothing. Only a tricycle coming from Dublin to carry it. A tricycle? Hmm. That improvident Irishman. Oh, that a daughter of mine had run off with a man who'd leave nothing but a tricycle. Papa. Well, he's the boy, then, are you? Oh. Uh, it's oh. Today's Friday. The boy's not of our face, Papa. Oh. Hi. It's just a minute, I think. I'll take your meat, then. Waste not, want not. Where will you be sending Roby to school, Papa? It's the elementary, of course. That is the truth. I have to teach you. I'll no reflections, Kate, on a school that pays you 16 shillings a week. Why can't you go to the academy? The laddie comes to us with no money. But you the same sister, Kate, You don't want to be a sister, Kate, and tell me the sanitation or you like to. The parents, Kate. Aye, that's right. Well, Robert will go to the academy. Well, Robert, have you nothing to say? Thank you. Oh. He doesn't want to eat. Let him go to bed. Have you decided where he's to sleep? I still think Grandma Lucky's room would be best. My mother pays good money for her room. She'll be home tomorrow, and you know she dislikes surprises. Please, 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 you will get expectations to sleep with your clothes on. Go on, dear. Look at me, laddie. I, I, you'll need a friend in this house. It's all right, boy. It's all right. Come along, Robbie. It's a fine black morning. And I'm taking you with me to my lawyer. I'm busy. Is this Santa? Aye. I'm off to see my lawyer. He took the keys. You didn't know. You didn't take it. I can't. Papa says he's going to sell it. What's that? He says he asked him to sell it to me. Someday, Robbie, I shall take this and let you in these two hands of mine and I shall... Oh, good morning, Mr. Gold. Ah, Mrs. Bosom. What a picture you make, madam. The sun shining like golden hot springs through your radiant hair. Have you had the honor of this, my great grandson, Robert? Robert? Your grandpa's a poet. And who wouldn't be the privilege to greet this lovely into the morning? Be off with your candy, Dad. Take my advice, Robbie. Enjoy the lady. 
Dandy, come in. I'll give about a minute, Robbie. Sit down there. Yes, Dandy. I say, yeah. Uh, Documents, uh, copy, Dandy, go. Are they ready? They are, Mr. Mercury. Sir, here they are. Ah, oh, okay. Yes, that's a lovely copy. Oh, of course, it is. It's a pity you couldn't have done such a job on your first Dandy, go, as you have on your hand, I think. Well, I'll credit this work for the rest. Could you be uh, letting me have, say, perhaps uh, half a crown, sir? And what did I tell your son in law, Mr. Lucky? You know the arrangement. The money I pay you to copy my legal paper so to pay this premium on your life insurance. I, I, I know, but uh, perhaps it's true. I see you through your dandy demon rum. No, not a penny. No, out with it. Robbie, come here. Lad, this is Mr. McKellar. As fine and generous a man as you'll ever know. May I present my great friend, Sir Robert? Robert? If you're ever in trouble, and heaven help us, you probably will be, why you'll know who to come to. Who do you uh, Dandy, I find there's a little item of half a crown, do you, after all? Yeah, it's a trivial matter, lawyer. Thank you, sir, and good day. Goodbye, Robert. Goodbye, Mr. Keller. You look strange. I never noticed that establishment before. What's that mean, Dandy? Yes, the street there. What does that sign say, laddie? It's a pretty round. Good day, lawyer. Oh, bless me, bless me. Obviously a place of refreshment. How would you like a nice glass of goblin lemonade? Thank you, Mr. Excellent. I'll fetch you one. And then you can play. Yonder's the village green, see? Aye, there's a lucky boy. Lemonade and laughing. <laughs> what more could you ask? Hello. Hello. What are you doing? I'm looking for my cousin. I'm going to see my grandpa. What's your name? Robert Turner. I'm here. I'm all for you. What are you going to do when you grow up? I don't know. Do you? Of course. I'm going to marry a fine man. We've had many fine children. Oh, where's my cousin now? Who are you talking to, Alice? Who's Louisa? This is Louisa. He's my cousin. Don't you remember that? It's Louisa's mother. Oh, you're a talking cousin. Yes. Come on, Alice. Keep talking. But that's all right. I said, come on. You'll take some of that. Come on, Alice. 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 Come on, what are you thinking about? Nothing. Where did you get that big red nose? No, big red nose. Why? Did you never hear of the Zulu War? Oh, oh, tell me, tell me. Oh, boy, I'm not the one to brag. But there we were, cut off in the jungle by the savage hordes of Zulu. Someone had to get a message through the relief column. I'll carry it there, Clyde. I took a revolver in each hand and a knife in the teeth. Quietly, I crawled across the rocky belt. The jungle, that is. I was almost through the enemy line when they charged upon me by the score. I fired. Bam, 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 bam. Screaming, the savages fell back. But how long could the ammunition hold out? I flashed over the knife. Zip, zip, zip. Pop, he fired up a me. But the Zulu still came. And then... Bam, bam. Oh, then a sweet sight. Out of the dark of the night came running my great white charger, Athena. I leaped on her back. The Zulu gave chase. Like the poison arrows dark in the air. I was wounded. I crung them hard. Oh, that magnificent animal. He carried me to the relief column. Taken, bleeding, breathless. I fell into their arms with my message. The flag was saved. <laughs> they seemed to think so when the queen, God bless her, decorated me at Balmoral Castle. A poison spear, lad. A direct hit. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you again. Some other day, laddie. And there will be others. It's you and me together, my boy, in whatever the difficulty. Yes, Uncle. And we're in difficulty this very moment. Yes? Look up the street, Woody. Your grandma let you come home. <laughs> Let me try and fall into the clutches of that horrible old man. Ah, here he is now. Come in, Robbie. Come in and be seen by your grandma, Letty. You'll now be in the hands of a good Christian woman. So come to your grandma, Robert. Mm -hmm. Look at his clothes. Do you think he can go to the academy in rags? But the lad who comes to us with no money. Oh. You have no suggestion I buy his clothes, are you? You're my son. But you're a tight-twisted penny from the night. Here, boy. Here's a suit. Thank you. Sit down, laddie. Don't run. You'll last longer than that, eh? 
But liberty can go too far. And when it starts costing money, I'm against it. I'm sorry I bothered you. I wish I had the money to give you, boy. You see, Robbie, it's a very difficult thing. I live in the house of Mr. Lucky, and I pay no money for the rare privilege. I earn money copying papers for Mr. McKellar, but it all goes to pay my life insurance. I never see a penny of it. Please, Papa, it is But it's important to get the new suit, so you could change your face. Why don't you go to the established church? Yes, I couldn't. Your grandma let me would just love you if you did. There's no sense taking the hard way. I think I'm strong to be, Grandpa. If you'd said anything else, I'd have disowned you. Robbie, I'm a sinful and irreverent man with little interest in any church. But before I see you done out of your suit, I'll burn the town of Logan for it. Okay, Mr. Dow, a new book to read, is it? I'm not buying a book, sir. I'm selling one. An encyclopedia of sanitation. I believe Mr. Lecky purchased this for 21 shillings. He did? Mr. Lecky says it is not comprehensive enough. He must have his money back. Oh, it has been yours now. I cannot give him more than 17 shillings. I shall accept 15. Eh? It's a matter of justice. I don't understand. You don't have to. Take your book, sir, and give me 15 cents. Mr. Dow, you did what with my encyclopedia? I sold it, Mr. Lecky, for 15 shillings, and then I brought the boy his new suit. That robbery? I'll, I'll have you arrested. I was hoping you'd say that, Mr. Lecky. And what would the court say of a civil employee who robs an orphan lad of his tricycle and sells it for 15 shillings? You deceitful old man. I have just one more word, and if you ever dare to mention this to Robbie, I'll burn this house down at my first opportunity. Good day, Mr. Lecky. <laughs> It's five years now since I first wrote in this diary. There was a flower show in Hale yesterday. Alice and Keith ran. Later, Gavin and I danced with her. It's good to have friends like Gavin and Alice. It's almost June. In two weeks, I'll be graduated from the academy. The whole family will be there. Even Grandpa says he'll come. It'll be the first time he sat down with the lecture since seeing the glory of Jubilee. And now, parents and friends, as we conclude our graduation exercises, it is with considerable pleasure that I make an award to our outstanding students. In my 11 years at the academy, not a single student has warranted this prize. Now at last, Logan Foot possesses a young scientist, who I prophesy someday will be a great doctor. And Mr. Robert Cannon, the special medal in science. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Good work, Green Bridges. Good luck. It seems strange, doesn't it? All those years in the academy, and now we're walking home together for the last time. Well, Daddy, have you made this up to you in such a case? I. Brody, my father still wants you to come with us to look in there. Listen, thanks, Gavin, but I can't. But the farm will be running. I've got a job starting Monday. A job? The boiler works. Kate, she's married now, you know. Kate tells me she can get me into the machine shop. The boiler works? Oh, Robbie, what's the matter with you? There's no chance at all you'll be coming to the university. No, Gavin. When do you leave for Los Angeles? Tomorrow. Well, here's the big. Good luck to you, Robbie. To you too, Alex. Thanks. Goodbye, Gavin. I'll write to you. You're missing me. I... It's a bone now. I uh, It's a bone, is it? You can never even know them. It's a... I... Uh, it's a here beside mine. It's my heart. It's such a romantic thing. I... Uh, I, they tell me there's a second water port on that river. Uh, you know, there isn't there a chance in the world that you can go on with your studies? Mr. Reese thinks you're going. He's never even occurred to you, Mr. Reese. I have obligations, Alice. Mm. The lucky don't rich. Well, they're not poor, but they're still poor. I guess it's the same. Oh, you're the most exasperating person I've ever knew. But you're bound to be a doctor. You know it's Roby, but no, it's the boy of work. Just because it's interesting. Oh, to be a doctor. To have a laboratory of my own. Well, at least you're not going away. No. I'll study my thing and have a Logan for it. For a while, anyway. Green driving. My mother's been sitting in Scotland, not even a moment to do it. 
don't know what you mean by that. Don't you know? Is he the cleverest boy in Logan City? Our son. He was a soldier. I mean, would it be all right? Could I put my arm over it? Yes, you would, Roger. It is a bony night. I know. A bony night. In a moment, we'll return with Act Two of The Green Year, starring Charles Cogan, Tom Drake, Beverly Tyler, and Jim Conan. Occasionally, the United States Senate Chamber is illuminated by a glimmer of humor, like the time word reached the Senate that certain interests in Hong Kong were making commercial use of the works of American songwriters without paying the customary composer royalty fees. After investigating, the lawmakers designed a bill to protect Tim Pan Alley. Sponsors of the measure were Senators Russell Long of Louisiana, Hawaii's Hiram Fong, William Fong from Virginia, and Edward Long of Missouri. The legislation was introduced on the Senate floor as the Long Fong Spong Long Hong Kong Song Bill. On another occasion, Congress honored Robert Frost with an award recognizing his contributions to American letters. In presenting a medal to Mr. Frost, the late President Kennedy took note of the unanimous vote on the matter and concluded, it's the only thing Congress has agreed on for a long time. Two of the lighter moments that really happened on Capitol Hill. Act two of the Green Year, starring Charles Coburn as Grandfather Gow, Tom Drake as Wilbur, Beverly Tyler as Allison, and Jim Cronin as Mr. Lucky. Now, Robert Shannon has labored in the boiler work at Logan But one night, grimy and tired, he meets a friend as he leaves the factory. Ten minutes later, breathless and excited, he bursts into Allison's house. Logan! Logan, what is it? I just saw him, Allison. He's to read. Oh, you don't know what's happened. He's arranged for me to sit for the marshal. The marshal's so is it. I can study medicine, Allison. Oh, Logan! Well, I haven't won it yet. I can't win it, it's impossible, but I can try. Oh, Allison. Oh, Allison. Brother, I don't want to kiss you, but I couldn't so afraid to believe it's too heavy. No, no, I don't. It's such a wonderful thing. I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Excited. Goodbye, Allison. I'll see you later. Brother, a scholarship. I don't tell you how much. A hundred pounds a year. For five years, Mama. What's this paper, Robbie? And Mr. Reed gave it to me for you to sign. Mr. Mitchell told me to try for the scholarship. Well, Robbie, you must understand something well. But no hard and easy time of it. Murdoch, after all, has spent his education works in that nursery raising flowers. No more money for board from Grandma Letty since she's gone to kill Monarch. No financial aid from Katie now she's married, and Grandpa Gow is still upstairs with an appetite like a growing boy. Even Adam. Adam, my own son, a great, successful man in London, owing me 50 pounds for 12 years now. He'll pay. Uh, he'll pay indeed. Mama, I've resolved. I'm going to London. I'll collect that 50 pounds if it takes the whole four weeks of my holiday to do it. We were speaking of a scholarship, Papa. I cannot let you go for five years more without a penny of return for the support of the house. No, I won't have it. I won't have it. You must let him. You can't sell the Robbie's life and hopes for a few pennies from the boiler work. Mama, you spoke of money. I'm doing this for your own good, Robbie. You're reaching above your station in life and you're reaching out the disappointment. No. No, I cannot sign the paper. <laughs> Are you Mr. Jason Reed? I am. Sit down, Mr. Gow. Mr. Reed, I'm not merely Robert Shannon's great-grandfather. I'm a defender of the rights of man. I tell you, sir, when a man thinks low enough to deny these rights, I protest. And if you are among these worms who would deny the boy an education, I tell you I shall not stand by and countenance such a sin. And I must tell you, Mr. Gow, that the laddie cannot be entered for the scholarship only because Mr. Lecky had denied permission. Then we'll enter him on the quiet. The entry must be signed by his guardian. I'll sign it. Mr. Gow, have you lost your wit? I still have the wit to sign my own name. Under that fool Lecky's nose, I'll send Lecky away. I might even send him to London. This is the most unbelievable and dangerous nonsense I've ever heard. But I'm with your heart and soul. Here, take these books for over. Let him start with these till Lecky goes to London. Now, off with you, Mr. Reed. We are mine like ours. We'll tear him to pieces. I'm going to London just, Papa. I've made up my mind. Oh, Mama. And you have nothing to interfere with your study into the scholarship because I'll see to it you don't come back till the middle of August. Mama, 
Who told you? Never mind. Good luck, Robbie, dear. I'm so tired, Mr. Reed. I've studied so long. I've read so much. I swear I don't know anything now. I haven't even begun. All right, now mathematics. What is a conic section? The intersection of a plane with a cone. Clumsy. What's the formula for the surface of the sphere? All right, boys. Paper. Come now, paper. Thank you. Face the growth of industrial Europe. Causes. Effects. Think, boys. Think. Distinguish between density and specific gravity. Between kinetic and potential energy. What were Newton's three laws of motion? Think, 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 think. Describe the chief product of the Daniel Valley. Not to do. Oh. The examination starts tomorrow. Not to do. According to Mr. Reed, only second grader studies the last minute. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, come along. We're going to take a long walk. You and I and the professor. When will you train me, Daniel? Can I get eight o'clock? But I'll be back tomorrow night. All these examinations on one day? No, I'll go back to Glasgow Sunday. Then physics on Monday, yes. Now, listen, what do you do when you grow up? I told you that once, long ago. I'll marry a fine man and have many fine children. What do you do? Would you say we're grown up now? No, Robbie, not quite yet. How it be? Think about it. I think perhaps you'd better concentrate on the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. All I can keep in mind is how much I want to kiss you. Then, then perhaps you'd better kiss me, Robbie. Oh, oh my God! You win the scholarship, you win. I love it. Just came, Rudy. A telegram from Glasgow University. <coughs> well, tell me, tell me, history? Ninety-two percent. You missed only one question in geometry. Ruby, you know what this means. We know, we know. <laughs> you still got the examination on Monday, but I swear to you on the basis of what you've done, if you only get 50% in physics, you'll win the market. Uh, Mr. Gow, you wouldn't have a drink in the house. Not until Monday. <laughs> now, now, what about that cop, Ruby? Oh, it's... It, it's just a cold. Uh, he's a wee bit warm on the... Side. Uh, uh, well, I'll stop by the doctor. I've got the rest now, anyway. Goodbye, Ruby. Good boy. He, he'd best stay in bed, is that it, Doctor? Man, he is that. He will get this prescription to the chemist right away. Robbie has examinations Monday and Jesse. You think by then? The temperature's a hundred and four. Mr. Gull, your grandson's on the bed of pneumonia. How are you feeling, Robbie? Oh, I'm fine, Mr. Reed. The doctor said I could go off today. Ten days I've been in bed now. Yes, yes, boy, I know. Robbie, I wrote to the university. I ask if you may take your examination when you've recuperated. Mr. Reed, well, why didn't you tell me? Because they've refused. I went myself to Glasgow yesterday. I went down on my knees to them. If there's any consolation, they've ranked you second. Oh. Thank you, sir. I begged them to give you an average on your physics, but no. No, they're ruled by, guided by rules, not for justice. Well, you're young, something else will turn up. Ed, Allison here, she wants to see you. Rosie. Take care, laddie. Allison. You know. Yes, Robert, but there's, there's more bad news. Bob and Jane. But what happened? If he was coming to see you, Robert, he told you all. He was running for the train. He slept it. He thought what? Dead. Dead? Where are you going? Robert! As a matter of fact, he's coming as my guest on his money. 
As a music lover of long standing, I shall never allow myself to miss a rendition of Hamlet's Messiah. Handel, in fact. Oh, that's what I said. Uh, Grandpa, there's a famous teacher coming to the concert. If he likes my voice, Mother will insist on my going to the conservatory at Edinburgh. Oh, I don't want to go, Grandpa. I don't want to leave Robert. Oh, he'll be coming back, Lassie. But he's the one that should be studying that high. Oh, Grandpa, what a fine doctor he could be. And when I think of him down at that boiler work, I... There's things, Lassie, that no one can stop, good or bad. But what about Robert? Don't tell him till the concert's over. You know, who knows? Perhaps you'll make such an eternal mess of it, there'll be nothing to worry about. <laughs> It was like an angel, Allison. You're a fan tonight. I was never so proud. Brother, he's a priest. I... Brother, I... Oh, you needn't say it. Grandpa told me. You're going away. Just to Edinburgh. Oh, you'll go further than that. No, Brother, no. I heard you sing tonight. Then I'll not leave here at all. Oh, you must. Oh, Brother, say the word. I'll keep you out of here. How can I pass? How could I... Oh, you must be a doctor. If you love me, then sit me on me. What would I be doing to you if I'm out of here? I know my place. Whether I'm suited or not, whether I choose it or not, I have a place at the boiler works, and I'll not share it with you. Oh, I was really. If I loved you less, it might be different. You're young. I... I suppose you'll get over it. I may be young for you. I'm not going to tell you. Would you take me home, Will? Robbie, come in. We've been looking all over for you. Papa. Dr. Gilfrey. Mama, Robbie, she's very ill. Happy so sudden. Her heart and body can tolerate just so much wear and tear, Robbie. Well, no. That's what she is. Well, no. There's nothing I can do. It's in good hands, me. Robbie, I'll be in my room, Papa. And you'll pray for her, Robbie. Light the candle by your shrine. Pray for her, Robbie. I doubted my redeemer. Forgive me. Punish me, Lord, but not Mama. Never doubted me. All that I've lived now is complete. I ask you. I make this bargain. Let her live and I'll never doubt again. Never. Robin, she's gone, Lord. She's gone and left her. Is that you, Robert Shannon? Yes, Father Roach. I was just coming to your house, Rad. I heard Mrs. Lossie was in. It's dead. God bless her. Robert, what's that got to be? All my life I've worn this. But I'm throwing away now. I'm weary of metal. This may be God's way of testing you, of showing you the way you must go. What way? Into the priesthood, my son. The thought didn't want me to be a doctor. It's too late to apply him by being a priest. It's never too late to turn to God. I don't believe in God. God believes in you, Robert. I don't believe in God anymore. In a moment, we'll return with a third act of The Green Year, starring Charles Coburn, Tom Drake, Beverly Tyler, and Hume Cronin. dissatisfied when he threw it away. Fortunately, his wife had faith in her husband's ability, so she received the manuscript and sent it off to the publisher. Since that time, the song has sold more than 11 million copies in one form or another. Whiting had other famous offsprings, of course. Sleepy Time Gal, 
Ain't we got fun? Louise, popularized by Maurice Cavalier. Not to mention his own vocalist offspring, Margaret Whiting. But it's Till We Meet Again, which has left its mark on the musical and non-musical world. So aptly was the bitter sweetness of Parker, captured by Richard Whiting. Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Act three of The Green Year, starring Charles Coburn as Grandfather Gow, Tom Drake as Wilbur, Beverly Tyler as Allison, and Jim Conan as Mr. Lucky. All in a few months, Robert Shannon's modest world has cast down a him. One disaster after another. Morose now in silence, ignoring everyone, even Grandfather Gow, Robert works on in the family. Sharing a word for his family, only when he comes home at night to suffer. You're late, Robbie. Am I? It doesn't come up in the old age to have to come back here. No. I must care for a house full of men who come late to me. There's my book. You won't wait for him, will you? And that old man upstairs, what of him? I'll take him his place. No, you're not. He eats downstairs with the rest of us, or he'll not eat at all. Sit down. You're late, my duck. Where is Grandpa? He's in his room. Are you sure? Look at this. Grandpa's hat. I have hat. Found floating on the common pond. How look upstairs? Grandpa! They found his coat by the footbridge. Don't you see him, right? Uh, I don't recollect my daughter. The man avoids me. The common pond, did you say? My daughter, is it possible? I say anything was possible the way he's been treated. Yes, Robbie. Well, he's read not and kept him. Draw my maggot and day and night, and you threatened to send him to the workhouse. Workhouse? Papa wouldn't do that. And what do you know about it? When have you been home, safe to eat and sleep? Well, I support him, I pay his keep. Papa's got no right. Now, you pay your feet, but you're speaking like a stranger. Like you beat everybody since Allison went away. What about me? You think he... Why would he wish to live any longer? Now he's been after the misery of the paper. He's been looking forward to the flower show and the fair. He thinks my coronation for his own. I... I just don't know. Well, I do. There's no security. You must wire for Adam. First thing, devoted to the old man he was. And he knows all about the insurance. Uh, Robbie, where are you going, boy? I'm going out. Uh, uh, you'll send that telegram for me. I'll send it, Papa. If I don't find him... <laughs> Another day, no sign of him yet. Oh. So you came, madam. I'm glad to see you, Robbie. No trace at all, Robbie. Oh, I've looked everywhere, Kate. He was a fine man, a lovely man. Where well, certain Grant is still alive, Adam. The insurance will be paid, Papa. Touched on the spot. Oh, Ruby, how oh, my heart breaks for you. I was just saying, Mrs. Boozemley, a finer man never breathed. He had his fault. A weakness or two. But what is that? Why don't you say what you're really thinking? That he's worth more to your death than alive. I'm shocked with you, Robbie. Where's your manners? Papa, Mr. McKellar here. Oh, lawyer McKellar, sir. Come in, come in. The police, uh, just inside the door here, Mr. Lucky. Uh, they'd like to speak to you. The police. Aye, aye, they found Gandhi Gow. He's been in jail. Bring him in, constable. It's Grandpa. In jail? Mr. Gow. <sighs> Mr. Gow, you're intoxicated. I am, Mr. Lucky. <clears throat> Robbie Ladd and Mrs. Bosomley. He walks in beauty like the night. Of cloudless climes and starry skies. Quite a little younger, sir. Dear family and friends, and you, Madam Lucky, <laughs> forgive me. Robbie, are you not coming with me? <laughs> oh, Grandpa. In a body, in a body, coming through the right. In a body. Good morning, Grandpa. Here, your medicine. Why can't you content yourself with beating me to death? Now get out of my way. I'm getting up getting dressed. You're staying in bed. Do you think there's going to be a flower show and there's a job there and a fair in Loganford and me not in attendance? You know what the doctor said. You know what's words like the last one you'll meet with a nature. That will be an embarrassing meeting for both of us. And Grandpa, you've got to keep off the whiskey. On my honor as a gentleman, Robbie, why I've not had a drop for days. Except for that bottle under your mattress. Hey. Eh? No, no, I'll stay home with you, Grandpa. Go on, go on. No, go on and enjoy yourself. No, I'll keep you company. I won't go. If you stay in this house, I'll never speak to you again. Get out, get out. Just leave me here to die all by myself. Look, Papa, it's Grandpa. Marching there with the home guard. And it is here, Mr. Zoe. Here. 
And contrary to my explicit instructions, and look, take a of his sleeve. And switch the bottle. Oh, that man. That wretched man. Robbie, I'll take care of him, Papa. <laughs> Allison. Allison, what are you doing here? I wait for nothing for it. You'd answered my letter and you wouldn't know known what it me. Well, well, anyway, I'm glad you're back. The phone took a day. I couldn't miss the phone. Neither could Grandpa. You see it? Yes, and I've got to find him. Allison, what can I see in a few minutes? I'll be here, Rosie. I'll get Grandpa and take him to Murdoch. I'll be right back. <laughs> Step up, lady, step up. Have a glass with your grandpa's friend. Grandpa, put your glass down and come here. Grandpa, Allison's here. Hey? Can I trust you just for a few minutes? Why, that is for eternity. Grandpa, how do you do it? Do what? I'm 18 years old. Compared to you, I'm an old man. How do you do it, Grandpa? I'd like to know. You're in the green years, Robbie. You suffer the critical disease of being young. The Lord deliver me from ever having to go through that again. Well, go on, find your lassie. I'll not budge him. No, 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 no. We'll, we'll go to Murdoch. You got a girl at the flower exhibit. Uh, get, get me one of Murdoch's carnations, Robbie. Will you? I don't feel well. You want me to save her? Robbie, I'd like to. I'd like to, laddie, but I don't think I can. Uh, Robbie. Uh, Robbie. Grandpa. Uh. Grandpa! And you were over Cannon, I knew one day you'd be back in church again. You said, Father Hood. My great grandfather. Yes, lad. I hear. He was a man of many follies, but he was incapable of me. He never bargained with God. He could do things because he enjoyed doing them. Oh, do you think of God who understood my great grandfather? I forgive him. I have doubted you. We will forgive you. I should like to pray with you, Robert. Grandma Lessie, Papa, Katie, Margaret. Well, now that we're home, I want you to know that I think it was a fine funeral. A fine funeral. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, look. That's it, Adam. Hush, girl. Yes, Adam. Expensive. The Casey. May I come in? Ah, Mr. McKellar, make yourself comfortable. Uh, don't leave, Ruby. Yes, yeah, this hardly concerns him. We're about to take up the matter of the will. If you'll excuse me. I time. want the entire family present. Now, according to my figures, the insurance comes to a matter of 658 pounds, 12 shillings and sixpence. And the right number. Exactly. We must say it, Papa. He was a fine man. Oh, I... Sit in, Robert. You respected him before he died. You might respect him now. I'm mean, going to read the will. But there's no need, sir. We all know what's in it. It's a very simple document. He left all he possessed, the insurance, that is, to your late wife. And in the event of her death, to her executor, yourself. That's proper. Mm. There's a codicil, however. The codicil was drawn shortly after Robert Cannon failed his examination for the university. Sandy Gull left everything he possessed to Robert Cannon. He was insane. He was as sane as I am, saner. Well, he couldn't do that. It's not legal. It's legal. It's a crown pop and I'm black. I'll take it to law. I'll take it to law. I'll take it to law. Don't say, Miss Felicity, I do so, and I promise you I'll fight you in the county court. I'll fight you in the high court. I'll fight you to the floor of Parliament itself. <laughs> Robert, it was Gandhi Gow's fault that you'd send us some wisely on your education. But I seem to mind him saying, a sort of afterthought it was, that if you preferred to invest it in wine, women, and song, that was your privilege. Oh, that's At last, Alison. At last, I stand before thee. The great gates of the University of Glasgow. Give me your hand, baby. My hand. Walk in the arbor, see those shapes, Robbie. Walk into your future, Robbie. 